In this Explain Everything, I'm going to discuss the transport of gases. Now remember that we talked about the difference between ventilation, right here, and respiration. So ventilation is simply inhalation and exhalation, breathing, as we commonly know it as. Respiration is the actual exchange of gas. Now the gas exchange is going to occur either at the lungs, which is going to be pulmonary, or at the cells, which is going to be systemic. So looking at the transport of gases, we have to look at the exchange first of all. So pulmonary, the oxygen is going to be going from the lungs, from the alveoli, into the blood. And then when it gets to the cells, it's going to go from the blood to the cells. Remembering that the reason we're having oxygen being delivered to the cells is because of cellular respiration. So the glucose will um, be metabolized, aerobic respiration in the presence of oxygen, producing CO2 and water. Okay, the metabolic byproduct, CO2, must be removed from the body. So it's going to go from the cells to the blood. That's going to be, again, part of the internal respiration systemic occurring at the cells. It will be then transported to the lungs where the CO2 will then go from the blood into the alveoli and then be exhaled. So let's follow the movement of these gases. So oxygen coming in from the atmosphere. Now appreciate that there's going to be other gases other than oxygen but we're just following oxygen for now. So through inhalation, it goes into the lungs, and then through external or pulmonary respiration, it gets into the blood. It travels through the blood until it gets to the cells, at which point internal respiration occurs and we have the delivery of oxygen to the cells. The cells then undergo cellular respiration, producing CO2 as a metabolic byproduct, so now the CO2 is going to leave the cells and go back in to the blood, again, systemic internal respiration, and then being transported back to the lungs where it will then go into the alveoli via external or pulmonary respiration, and then that metabolic byproduct, CO2, will be exhaled. So appreciating that the, the flow of blood to the cells is gonna be oxygenated, and then coming back from the cells will be deoxygenated. So let's think of hemoglobin as a taxi, as I was discussing in class. So at the lungs, at the alveoli, external respiration, okay, the external comes before the internal. It's going to pick up the oxygen. It then transports it via the highway or whatever mode of transportation. In this case, it's going to be the blood. And it will then drop off the oxygen at the cells. Now, the taxi doesn't want to lose money, so he's hoping that he can pick up another passenger and on his way back, make some money. So what he's going to do is here, as he drops off oxygen, the hemoglobin will pick up CO2. Again, transfer it back, transport it back, and then is going to drop it off at the lungs, and it can be exhaled. So again, picking up oxygen, dropping it off, and then picking up the CO2 and dropping it off. Let's now just concentrate on oxygen. So as we've already discussed, it is going to be picked up by hemoglobin during external respiration and then dropped off during internal respiration. So the reaction that we're looking at is oxy oxygen plus hemoglobin going to oxyhemoglobin. Okay, there is the oxyhemoglobin okay, right here. Now, note here that it has high affinity at the external respiration, and then low affinity internally. So what's happening there is that the hemoglobin molecule is altering its affinity. Now we discussed this in class, and I'm not going to go over that part of it. There's another explain everything on oxygen transport um, to discuss that. But basically just appreciate that there's high affinity during external respiration when you want the hemoglobin to pick up the oxygen, and then the affinity decreases when you want it to drop off. Okay, so we're going to have the formation of oxyhemoglobin during external respiration. And then what we're going to do when we get to the, um, to the cells is the reaction is just going to go the opposite direction. So now we have oxyhemoglobin breaking down. 
and releasing the oxygen. So what happens during internal respiration is the breakdown of the oxyhemoglobin. So these two reactions right here they are essentially just the forward and reverse reactions as indicated below. Okay, so here we are having the formation of oxyhemoglobin, which is the forward reaction here, and this is going to be occurring during the external pulmonary. And then here you have the breakdown of the oxyhemoglobin, which is right here, and that is going to be during internal or systemic respiration. Now let's look at the transport of CO2. So here it is, it's been formed via cellular respiration, metabolic byproduct, due to the metabolism of glucose. It is then going to go back to the alveoli and then exhaled. So we're going to have internal respiration first, where it is going to go from the cells into the blood, and then external respiration, where it is going to go from the blood into the alveoli. The transport of CO2 is a little bit more complicated than oxygen because whereas oxygen is either dissolved in the blood or the majority of it is being transported by hemoglobin, CO2 has three ways of being transported. Not shown in this diagram, but 7% of it is going to be actually dissolved in the blood, remembering it's more soluble than oxygen, so it has about 7% in the blood, just dissolved in the blood. Okay, what I'm showing here are the other two ways that hemoglobin gets transported in the blood, and that is looking here. Okay, we are going to have hemoglobin picking it up and then dropping it off. And in addition to that, the majority of the hemoglobin is going to, be, or sorry, the carbon dioxide is going to be converted into bicarbonate ion. So let's just first of all look at the, hemo, the role of hemoglobin. So the hemoglobin is going to pick it up. Okay, so hemoglobin plus CO2 is going to form carb amino hemoglobin, remembering that it is not um, competing for oxygen, it's binding at a different spot, spot. And then it will release the CO2 in the reverse reaction. So following it here, you can see that it will form, okay, right here, it's going to form the carb amino hemoglobin during internal or systemic respiration. And then here it is going to break down and release the CO2, this reaction here, at the alveoli during external respiration. So now let's focus on the reaction that is catalyzed by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, and that is CO2 plus water to bicarbonate ion plus hydrogen ion. Now again I mentioned that there is an intermediate in the middle of that equilibrium which is going to be carbonic acid. We're just not dealing with it. Okay so let's look at what happens here. So in the external respiration, okay the, sorry let's start with the internal. With the internal respiration right here, okay we are going to go in the forward reaction. Okay CO2 is going to be converted to bicarbonate ion it is more hydrophilic, so now it will be transported in the aqueous environment of the blood. Okay, so that's going to be during internal respiration. Once it gets to the alveoli, right here, you're going to have the reverse reaction occurring, where the bicarbonate combines with hydrogen ions once again to reform CO2, which will then be exhaled. So really all we're doing is we're just converting this, this, this relatively insoluble CO2 into a more soluble ion, the bicarbonate, as it's being transported in the blood. Now let's review this summary. First of all, let's, looking at, let's look at the concept of picking up and dropping off. So what, we, what I mean by picking up is that the hemoglobin is going to combine with either the oxygen or the CO2, or CO2 is going to undergo the reaction catalyzed by the carbonic anhydrase. So all three of these forward reactions here are going to be picking up whatever it is that it's picking up, oxygen or CO2. OK, 
Okay, then if we look at the reverse reaction, okay, now we're looking at the dropping off. So here we're going to have the reverse reaction. Now it's dropping off the oxygen. In this reverse reaction, it's dropping off the CO2. And in this re reaction, it's, well, it's not really dropping it off. It's, 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 it's being converted back into CO2 from the bicarbonate ion. Okay, so the forward reactions are all picking up. The reverse reactions are all dropping off. Let's concentrate on what's going on at the lungs, pulmonary external respiration. We have just inhaled, so we want to pick up the oxygen, and therefore we're going to be going in the forward direction here and forming oxyhemoglobin. CO2, we picked it up at the cell, so now what we want to do is go in this direction and drop off the CO2 right here so that it can be exhaled. Okay, similarly, we would have converted the bicarbonate to hydrogen ion. Once we get to the pulmonary, we want to drop off that CO2 right here, so we're going to go in the reverse direction. So pulmonary, we are picking up oxygen and we are dropping off CO2, the hemoglobin, and we're also going to go in the reverse reaction to release the CO2 so that it can be exhaled. Now let's look at what's going on during systemic or internal respiration. Remembering this is at the cells. So the hemoglobin has carried the oxygen to the cells, so now what we want to do is we want to drop it off. So we are now going to go in the reverse direction. Oxyhemoglobin will then drop off the oxygen so that it can be utilized by the cell. The, for the oxygen that has been utilized, CO2 has been produced as a metabolic byproduct. So now what we want to do is pick up that CO2 okay, and form carbaminohemoglobin. So oxyhemoglobin is being broken down. Carbaminohemoglobin uh, is being picked up. Okay. We also want to um, pick up CO2, or not really pick it up, but convert it to bicarbonate. Okay, so this reaction here, we are going to go in the forward direction, converting the CO2 to bicarbonate to be taken back to the lungs, and then the reverse reaction will occur. Now let's compare these two illustrations. So let's start again with pulmonary external respiration that's occurring at the lungs and looking at the diagram below we can see that it is going in the forward direction here it is going in the reverse direction and here also going in the reverse direction so let's compare these two things for oxygen here we have at the lungs oxygen okay is going into the blood and is going to be picked up by hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin so here we are forming oxyhemoglobin. Here, with the CO2, okay, we have to release the CO2 so that it can be exhaled. So the reverse reaction is going on where we are breaking down carbaminohemoglobin to form carbon dioxide. So we are picking up the oxygen here, forming oxyhemoglobin, breaking down the carbaminohemoglobin, releasing the CO2 so that it can then be exhaled. Similar story for the carbonic anhydrase reaction. The bicarbonate is going to combine with the hydrogen, forming, reforming the CO2, which can then be exhaled, and that is this reaction right here. Okay, the bicarbonate combining with the hydrogen to form the CO2, which can then be exhaled. In both cases here, we're going to have the release of CO2 via the um, hemoglobin releasing it and through the carbonic anhydrase reaction. Now let's look at what is occurring during internal respiration or systemic respiration at the cells. So we have down here that the oxyhemoglobin is going to be broken down and therefore releasing the oxygen to the cells and we can see that right here that the hemoglobin, the oxyhemoglobin, is releasing oxygen, which will then enter the cells for cellular respiration. The CO2 is being picked up by hemoglobin. So now we are forming carbaminohemoglobin. 
that reaction is right here. CO2 is going to be picked up by the hemoglobin to form carb amino hemoglobin. So in this case, oxyhemoglobin is being broken down, carb amino hemoglobin is being formed. Okay, similarly with the carbonic anhydrase reaction, the CO2 is going to combine with the water to form the bicarbonate ion, which then can be taken back through the blood to the lungs, and then the reverse reaction will occur to release the CO2. Here it is right here, CO2 plus water going to bicarbonate plus hydrogen. I want to discuss one final uh, concept here, and that is the role of hemoglobin um, in controlling pH. So in addition to binding to oxygen and carbon dioxide at different spots, um, hemoglobin also buys, hi, binds hydrogen ions. So let's just take a look at what's going on there. In uh, ex internal respiration at the cells, the CO2 is combining with the water during the carbonic anhydrase reaction to form the bicarbonate. But note that it also forms a hydrogen ion. So during systemic internal respiration, that hydrogen ion combines with hemoglobin and therefore is, is kind of acting as a buffer to prevent fluctuations in the pH.